Moving out from Mercury, we reach Venus, the closest planet to Earth. Venus is the third brightest object in our sky, after the Sun and Moon. It is so bright, in fact, that it is often mistaken for an airplane or a UFO. Because it is closer to the Sun than Earth, Venus can only be seen around sunset or sunrise, depending on where it is in its orbit. This is why Venus is often called the morning or evening star. Venus is named after the Roman goddess of beauty and is the only planet in our solar system to be named after a woman. Galileo was one of the first people to observe Venus through a telescope and discovered that Venus goes through phases like the moon and Mercury. At its furthest from the sun, Venus appears half illuminated, proving that Venus orbits the sun and not the earth. Later telescopic observations were unable to see any surface details on the planet, but astronomers did discover that Venus is surrounded by a hazy atmosphere. Venus is the second closest planet to the sun at about 108 million kilometers. This is about 0.72 astronomical units or the distance from the earth to the sun. Venus is the closest planet to earth passing as close as only 41 million kilometers away. Venus is often called Earth's twin because the two planets are actually very close in size. Venus has a diameter about 12,100 kilometers or about 7,500 miles. That's only 600 kilometers or 400 miles less than Earth. Its density is close to that of Earth's. This means that Venus's surface gravity is about 90% that of the Earth. However, this is where the similarities end. For starters, Venus actually rotates backwards compared to the other planets on our solar system. On Venus, the sun would rise in the west and set in the east. Venus also has the slowest rotation of any planet in our solar system taking about 243 Earth days to rotate once. It only takes 225 Earth days to orbit the Sun, so a single Venusian rotation is actually longer than its year. Because of this incredibly slow rotation, Venus's core doesn't spin fast enough to generate a magnetic field. Being the closest planet to Earth, Venus was a prime target for early space probe exploration. In 1961, the Soviet probe Venera became the first spacecraft to fly by another planet, though it malfunctioned before its closest approach. One year later, the American Mariner 2 probe was the first successful flyby. It was followed in later years by several other Soviet and American probes. In 1974, Mariner 10, on its way to Mercury, took its first close-up images of Venus. These probes discovered that Venus has a thick atmosphere and sulfuric acid clouds which obscure the ground. Venus's atmosphere is over 90 times the mass and pressure of Earth's. The ground level atmospheric pressure on Venus is the equivalent of being almost one kilometer under the ocean on Earth. The atmosphere is also made up of over 96% carbon dioxide, a powerful greenhouse gas. The CO2 prevents heat from escaping, creating a runaway greenhouse effect. This results in a surface temperature of over 460 degrees Celsius, or 860 degrees Fahrenheit. This makes Venus, the planet with the hottest surface temperature in the solar system, even hotter than Mercury. The upper atmosphere is filled with clouds of sulfuric acid, which block out 90% of the sun's light. Even though it is closer to the sun, Venus's surface receives less sunlight than Earth. In order to peer through the clouds and finally view the surface, the Soviet Union sent a series of landers. In 1970, 
Venera 7 was the first successful probe to land on Venus. Later Venera probes were equipped with cameras to capture images of the surface. Venera's 9 through 14 consisted of an orbital mothership and a lander. At the proper time, the orbiter released the capsule containing the lander. The lander, protected by a heat shield, fell through the clouds and was slowed by a series of parachutes. After landing, the lens caps were jettisoned and the probes were able to send back pictures of the surface. However, even the sturdy titanium landers were not able to resist the intense heat and pressure for long. Most of the Venera landers stopped transmitting after less than an hour, with the longest lasting only 127 minutes. Even though these landers returned lots of scientific data, they each only saw a very small part of the surface. In order to map the entire planet, a different technique was needed. Venera 15 and 16 carried radar scanners instead of landers. From 1983 to 84, they mapped about one-third of the planet. On May 4, 1989, via the space shuttle Atlantis, NASA launched Magellan. Magellan was equipped with high-resolution radar, able to detect 10 times more surface detail than the previous Venera missions. From 1990 to 94, Magellan mapped 98% of the planet's surface. These maps show a surface mostly covered by cooled lava flows. There are strange dome-shaped volcanoes flattened by the massive atmospheric pressure. The highest point is Mat Mons, a volcano almost as tall as Mount Everest. More recent missions have found evidence that some of these volcanoes may still be active. In 2008, the European Space Agency's Venus Express probe detected hot spots on another volcano called Idon Mons. Venus also has impact craters, though they are pretty rare. This is because its atmosphere is thick enough to burn up most meteors before they can hit the surface. Venus is still being explored. At the time of this recording, Japan's Atatsuki probe is studying Venus's clouds and atmosphere. Many spacecraft fly past Venus and use its gravity to slingshot them to other places in the solar system. Bepi Colombo will fly past Venus on its way to Mercury in 2019. There are also future missions being planned to visit the planet itself, including a possible rover. There's even plans to create a new, updated version of the Venera mission, called Venera-D. 
Though Venus is similar to Earth in many ways, our closest planetary neighbor is a hellish place that will remain the domain of only the most hardy robotic probes. Perhaps one day, humans may visit this harsh world and float in balloons high above the acid clouds, crushing pressures, and intense heat of the planet below. But for now, this is just science fiction. One thing remains clear. This dangerous planet still hides many secrets for us to discover. Hello from the children of planet Earth. 